Okay, so let's get started. I have my Arches 100% cotton cold water pressed paper. I have my smaller palette today with um, many different colors of indigo blue, Payne's gray, hooker's green, and medium yellow. These are other inks from before. And I have burnt umber. Let me grab that. Put this right here. So I can use that. And some reds. And these watercolors, some of them are the Winsor and Newton Cotman watercolors. Um, some are just uh, Dick Blicks. Some are Artist Left series from Michael Stores. So we're going to take some of the medium yellow and Hooker's Green. Mix that up. Add a little burnt sienna. And you get this olivey kind of green. I might add a little more Hooker's Green in here. And I'm actually going to water this down a bit. And I might add a little bit of the indigo. Get a deepness. There we go. And I'm going to grab, let's see which brush I'm going to grab right now. I have so many next to me. I think for this one, particular leaf, I'm going to grab the Princeton Select uh, number eight round. So this is the leaves with the berries. I'm going to take, get a good amount on the belly, but then take it off the tip, hitting my paper towel. So we're just doing very simple, like teardrop shapes. Just fill that in. And actually, I think I'm going to change this brush because I realize the tip is too round. Which is, good, which is good for some things, but not for this particular painting. So I have to grab something that has more of a point. And I'm going to have to grab a smaller one right now. So I'm going to use my ground backer number two. It doesn't have a big belly, but it will do the job for the pointing part. So we're doing basically upside down teardrops. When you sketch this, you'll sketch a line curved line and on that curved line see I'm just showing you with the paint let me pull in like a little closer these are the berries from outside of my yard okay so it's a curved line just a simple line you're gonna put some little branches off of it and you're gonna make those little teardrops and then you're gonna put little branches in between and this is where the berries will go. Now this is kind of soaked into the paper because this paper is very thirsty. I'm going to add a little Payne's Gray and Hooker's Green make a real deep green color. Slightly concentrated, a little bit of water and just hit the edges. It's not watery enough. Consistency should be wet, but not too wet. Now I was hoping it would bleed, but since it's all dried in there, I'm going to have to do a technique where I get it. Put the concentration part in the bottom, go around the top, bring it down. I'm going to have to fill in this with wet water again. And then dab in the dark color. This one I didn't do that. Just put in the dark color, but you just get wipe away my brush and add it just to the edges if you want. Play around with how you want it to look. And then here I got this one wet again with a little color on it. And then I grab the dark deep color and it can bleed. And I want this to be darker also, the branch. And get the point. Then you grab your deep reds and medium reds. Here I'm using the combination. Excuse me, I'm going to grab this color. 
I have to use the Japanese watercolor for this. I have to get some tubes of red. You're gonna leave a little halo. You're not filling the whole thing in. You're gonna leave a little half moon on each berry. It's the highlight. And you go in and grab an aluminum crimson or whatever deep bread you've made using some red, maybe some indigo. And you put that on the bottom. Let it bleed a little bit. Maybe a little too dark. So I'll have to add some more red. See, it gives it more depth. I'm going to pull in a little closer so you can see. There you go. It's one of the first ones. The one next to this, I'm going to do a noble fur. Taking, sorry, my thing's making so much noise. We're just going to take some of the brown, which is the amber. Going to mix it with some Payne's gray. Maybe a little of the hooker's green. Medium concentration, not too watery. Pull the line right down here and here and here. So it looks like a little branchy stick. Now I'm going to go in my brush and grab that hooker screen. Pretty loose. And I'm going to swipe, swish up like this. Swish, 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 swish. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you get the idea. You're just gonna swish up. You're touching the branch part and you're quickly wisping it up. More natural feel. I mean, if it was stiffer looking, it's not gonna look like it belongs in nature. down here. This is a real simple greenery to do. Pull back a little bit so you can see. Now we're going to do a pine over here. Excuse me, over here. <laughs> going to grab some of the medium yellow. It's a little more olivey. And a little bit of the indigo. I'm going to water this down a little bit. I'm not getting this. Sense. I would do more like a medium green then. That's not coming out the way I want it to. So a little yellow. A little hooker's green. There we go. Medium green. So first we're going to make our branch. I'm going to water down burnt umber with the touch of paint gray and a little bit of indigo. And I'm gonna grab it like so. And here we're going to wisp it up also, but very skinny, skinny long lines. Excuse me, this thing is making so much noise. Okay, and it's gonna be like in a V. So we'll start the first bottom of the V. See, it's a little bit lighter. A little more delicate. Now you can add in. I'm going to do the V down here also. This pine has those needles that fall everywhere. And they're sticky on that branch part. Sappy, sticky. If you want to 
darkness there. And if you want to go in and grab a little bit of that hooker's green, I'll put that towards the bottom of the V's these, to give you the depth that we're looking for. That's the pine. Okay, on winter and upward. This is going to be just a simple winter leaf. I don't even know if there's a name for it, but again, very simple. You grab that medium green. You can easily make this shape. Basically, half and half. And same thing over here. And we'll go back in on this one when it's dry and put in the veins. And add the, the branch stem part. Again, with the same brown color that we have. And we're going to let that one dry. And we're going to move on to the holly. So many people make it so many different ways. Um, I'm going to start off using the medium green and then add some dark color into it. So it's like it's upside down C's. One, two, three, done. <laughs> and then just fill in the belly of that. I'm going to just put really loose water in here. You can make it as pointy as you like. And then we can fill it in with the color and let it bleed in there. Again, here we go. They like upside down C's. Just connecting them. It takes a little practice to get used to doing it. There's all different kinds of Holly leaves this on that don't look like this. They have the more realistic approach. But for this purpose, we're going to make it simple as possible. So it's still wet. You can go and grab some of your darker color concentration and dab the points and watch it bleed. And it will give it a nice three dimensional effect. You can see this, I'll pull this up. Grab some of that hooker's green, touch of indigo. Just dabbing it in little points. And just touching it. Look at that. And that's gonna bleed, and we're gonna let that dry. And we're gonna go on to the berries again. And grab your red don't want it hitting it yet. If you did want it hitting it, you're going to have to wait till this dries. Otherwise, it's going to bleed into it. Again, just doing your round circles, filling it in, but leaving the halo. And over here. Oh, that one touched. See? Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. There you go. Over here, we're going to do another stem. Simple greenery. I'm going to make small leaves going up and down. And they're just going to touch like so. Similar to the ones that I had before in the video, that I have a greenery video that I'll probably attach to the uh, information part of this video so you can see those different greens as well. There's that one. Let's see if this is dry. I think that's fairly dry. Well, this one's definitely dry. So above here, this one, you go back in concentrated part of dark green with a little bit of paint gray and you can go in and make your vein just do little lines diagonal lines 
You'll definitely need a small brush for this unless you're really good with the point of a really big brush. And same thing with this one. I think it's fairly dry. We can go in and put the veins in. These will be a little tighter. There you go. Over here, we're going to do our eucalyptus. Now this is a little tricky because this one we can't use the paint, the green. It's going to be more turquoise. So I'm going to add my turquoise green, the phalo green. That's a color that works well. And you kind of want to do this guy in layers. And you're gonna have to let it dry a little bit. Okay. And it's really simple, like circles. Simple circles, oblong circles. I do different types of eucalyptus in some of my videos and in my actual prints that I sell on my Etsy shop. And different, you can get some variety of green in here with this too. It can all be eucalyptus, turquoise. We're gonna let that dry and we'll come back to that one. Now we're gonna move on to the berries like I have here straight from my yard. The branch of watered down burnt umber. A little bit of medium yellow and a touch of red. Okay. So I've drawn, I've drawn the branch. It's just a curved line. And what I'm going to do first is grab and do the berries because you want the branch to go in between them. So we're going to do berries haphazardly along this branch. And I'm going to try and work with these fairly quickly because I'm going to add some dark reds as it's drying. So you put the berries. All along here, leave the halo again, just on one side. You don't want it on full size because that wouldn't make sense. The halo is the highlight from the the shadow, the sun, well, the sun or the light source. So this paper really soaks up the water pretty quickly. Go back in and grab. our dark reds and just hit the back part of it. Just hit the bottom back part of it. Like an, just the edge and the bottom. While that's driving, driving, excuse me, <laughs> drying, we'll work on the juniper berry. This guy, that's also in my yard, over here next to the berries. Again, with that hooker's green and mixed with some medium yellow. We'll do the branch part first. Right here. This guy has these little, I don't know if you can see it up close, little spikes coming off of it, even though they don't really hurt. You can see the little spikes? So you kind of want to put those in. And just do teeny weeny spikes hanging off. And it's going to go skinny to the top. Now we're going to grab the green. And this is going to be fun. It's just, oops, excuse me. Just 
like a tree branch, similar. And off that, you're gonna have like little, almost like little tree branches. So just like that, play around with them. Don't worry if it's not perfect. People will get the idea of what it is. If you really wanna get technical, each little line like these has the little fuzz hanging off it, but that's just too technical, in my opinion. You don't have to get that crazy. People will understand what it is. I use the greenery in my yard all the time. Christmas time on my mantle or as a centerpiece. Here in New England, lots of these plants grow. Sorry, people in the, the southern part of <laughs> the country. Okay, and then we move on to another little simple greenery down here. Just a little, this is a darker one with the darker the green and then we'll go back to the berries and the eucalyptus see how simple that is now we're gonna put the branch in with the berries see how we waited a little darker now. because we're going to be going in between the red and it would have bled and wouldn't it look this nice? It's looking a little too yellowish, so I'm gonna add darker brown. And now we're gonna go back to the holly, put our line in the middle. Oop, that's a little too wet, you don't want it too wet. That's a simple line. And to the eucalyptus. And then a darker green going into that. And then you could add another, put it on top. Because they overlap sometimes. Play around with it, you know. Like I said, none of this has to be perfect. And then just down here, over here, I'm just gonna do a simple branch of berries because we all love berries and these will be the blue berries. So this would be um, Meltamarine, blue, I have it in my take. I don't have it in the other ones. And then you could add some indigo on the bottom of that. It's a similar premise of the red berries. This we could add some leaves to them. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. Play around. So it looks a little too bright blue. And we're gonna just change that up by adding the indigo. I'm very favorable to indigo. Just gonna dab it on the bottom. Let it bleed up. And then you could add some greenery to this one as well. And add that medium green. Just some little leaves next to the stem. And then 
you go. And look at that. There you have it, of a variety of greens. I might actually add another one right here. A three leaf, three leafer. Let's go for some light green on this one. Cause I feel like the space is empty. Let's jazz it up. Do a three. And then we'll add dark. We'll just touch it. See how exciting that is. Just bleeds. Gives it that fun look. And there you go. All the winter greenery you need for your decorations, for your designs, for cards, whatnot. It's just that. You can just take them. If you paint these, you scan them in. Um, if you have a scanner, and you scan them in, bring them in Photoshop, and just cut out each element and use them as their own element and then you can put them in Illustrator or Photoshop and make all kinds of stuff with them. You could do invitations, cards, um, whatever you feel like. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please like, share and subscribe and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I appreciate all the comments and likes. I'm trying to grow my channel so any anytime you could share I would be much, muchly appreciated. Thank you very much. Have a great day.